Fabulous. All right, so yes, I'm gonna talk about the Mobile Ad Data Toolkit. This is a piece of kit we're developing in association with the Ad Observatory. Um, and it's really emerged at the intersection between the finalization of the first Ad Observatory project and the new Ad Observatory project that's starting up um, as we speak. And a massive acknowledgement, of course, to the co-authors on this and, and those who have been working on this very intensely over the last few months. Um, Abdul Obeid, our data engineer, um, also Lauren Hayden, who's a PhD candidate at University of Queensland, and of course, Associate Professor Nick Carra, who's also at UQ, um, and um, of course, the wider Ad Observatory team as well for their inputs into this. So why do we need these kinds of tools? We're, we're guided by this notion of platform observability. Um, and this is really responding to the post API moments. Many of you will be aware that uh, access to platform data is increasingly being restricted at this present moment. Um, but even with that happening and our attempts to continue to collect data from various platforms, um, those platform data streams were always limited in what they did provide us. It was always a thin form of data capture when we're only capturing the content that is being posted on platforms rather than also the interactions with content, the ways that people are interacting with and observing um, these platforms from their user base perspectives. And so there is this need and has always been a need for more thick forms of observation where we definitely enroll and involve the users in how they are experiencing these platforms in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, data donation is a technique that's emerging as a potential tool that we can use to fill this, this gap within our, our methods um, stacks. So um, this kind of gives you an idea of all the ways in which we have been attempting to address um, the, the questions around advertising, particularly and how ads play a role within our everyday lives. Um, we have at one end of this direct data gathering from transparency libraries. Um, so this is work that we're doing in our linkage project currently um, with FAIR, the Foundation for Alcohol Research and Education. Where we're directly capturing, say, large collections of alcohol advertisements um, from those libraries directly. In the middle there, custom browser plugins. This is very much what we've talked to you ad nauseum around with the first ad observatory. So this was a plugin developed to enroll users um, as they were using their desktop computers. It would capture the ads from their Facebook and send them to us. And we've got that massive data set of 800,000 ads um, that has informed a huge amount of research from that first phase project. What I'm going to talk to you about today is this kind of much thicker um, you know, tool that we've developed, the mobile um, screen recording app um, and how it works. And um, there's many more details we'll also capture in the follow-up conversation we're having um, uh, later this week with the Ad Observatory project. Um, so mobile screen recording is not a new technique by any means. It's been used quite extensively, particularly in anthropology, eth ethnography. Um, we've used mobile screen recording and other screen recording as a very, very useful method for capturing user activity on various digital devices. Some of the issues, though, with these approaches are that it is incredibly invasive um, on a device. Now, that might not be the case in, say, a lab setting where we're getting someone to do an experiment that's widely controlled. But certainly for asking people to download um, a, a, some kind of screen recording device that will track them in their everyday life 24-7, you can imagine that there's quite an amount of very intimate data and, and interaction that happens on someone's mobile, on your own mobiles, particularly, I can I imagine you, you can think about. Um, and so we need to be very, very cautious about what data we capture on those and how we take it off the device. Um, there's also significant impact on mobile devices in terms of resource use. When we're adding these additional processes, these can drain batteries, they can take up processing speed and impact performance of those devices, and indeed um, lead to many issues in terms of the amount of storage as well when we're capturing, say, lots of you know, high volumes of um, very, very you know, rich multimedia data. Um, there are device compatibility issues with these techniques. So do they work on every single device, Samsungs, um, you know, Huawei's, Pixels, whatever they might be. Every device is different in its architecture. And so there is a need to make these multi-device compatible. Um, and of course, the operating systems themselves have various levels of support for this. You can't do this kind of thing on Apple necessarily as well as you can do it on Android, for example. Um, and so what we're using here is extending techniques from some of our colleagues um, in Germany, Philip Kreider and colleagues, who've developed a, an approach that really addresses many of these issues quite extensively. Um, so what we have in play right now is a low frame rate, um, low resolution screen capture tool, which is privacy aware. 
none of the data that this, um, this app is capturing on Android devices leaves the phone until we are satisfied that it is the data we are interested in, which is advertising. And so we've kind of locked this app down um, you know, in a way that is quite dissimilar to other app recording and, and screen recording devices that would rather send all the data off the device onto a cloud server and promise security at the cloud server instance rather than from the device itself. Um, and so by moving the privacy question to the mobile, um, it, this actually addresses a lot of the issues around safety and security of people's personal data. So as you can see the example here, we have an ad that appears in someone's Facebook feed. What you're seeing on the right hand side there are the screen captures, the low res screen caps of that ad as it moves across someone's um, device. The whole stack looks a little bit like this. Videos are recorded on, on the, um, these users' devices. As I said, there's a whole detection framework that is native in the app on the user's phone that then goes to work to detect the advertising and extract that from that feed. What it then does is it deletes a lot of the non-advertising content immediately from that device. So this deals with the, the kind of storage issues that may um, emerge if we're collecting large volumes of video data on those devices. Any ads where we're satisfied that the software has detected an ad correctly are then sent to our secure cloud. Um, once they're on that cloud, there is another point of enrichment where we're, um, again, double checking that that is indeed an ad um, and doing various forms of OCR and other enrichment on the ad, and then making that data available for our researchers within the team to make sense of and examine. In terms of the accuracy of this, uh, we are using machine learning, of course, on those phones, and so this is not guaranteed to be 100% accurate. However, we are getting some very, very high accuracy from this. Um, I won't go through this in, in much detail. We're going to talk about this a lot more, and Abdul can talk to it um, in the Ad Observatory session later this week. Um, but about a 77% accuracy in terms of the, the number of ads we're capturing. The big thing here that we're really attentive towards is reducing the false positives. Um, and so, because we really don't want um, any non-advertising -adver content making its way into our hands. Um, I'll skip over that. The, the key next step for this is to really use this as a technology to extend our thinking beyond just individual ads into sequences of ads. And that's really where we've been taking this and will be taking this in the ad observatory is to really make sense of not just individual ads, but how these are sequenced on people's mobile phones. To that end, we've been developing some amazing tools and a big shout out to Dan Tran as well for his work in this project um, in developing dashboards that we've been using to monitor the ads as they're coming in and indeed allow our users to also monitor the ads on their devices. Um, my time's up, so thank you so much for that um, and look forward to your questions.